Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan, and we are on Monday, which is our Happy Everything. But before we do the Happy Everything block, I want to just thank everybody for coming to the 25th anniversary Zoom event for the Virginia Quilt Museum. It was so great to have so many of you show up and support the museum. I hope you learned a bit about it uh, and had a good time li listening to Jeff Evans talk about how symbols and quilts are symbols that are used across all kinds of decorative art. It was a really, really interesting talk that is the type of talks the museum has there, some of the types of talks. Now they will be putting that video online. It has to have some editing because of it being, uh, you know, sort of live. There's spots that they want to just take out for the final video where we had a break and things like that. that those, those don't need to be in there. So they have to edit that and then it will go online. So that will probably be a couple weeks before it's up there, but I will let you know. I also did this little clip to show you what my space here looked like when, when I set it up to do the event. So let's just watch that. So I want to show you what the my room looks like when I was recording and on the uh, Zoom for the Virginia Quilt Museum's 25th anniversary. See, I'm still dressed, just got done with that event. And what we do is to give me a backdrop, I have a stand behind my computer with a quilt on it. Whoops. <laughs> so around here, you can see my desk. There we go, my regular equipment and uh, here we go, back at my desk, <laughs> and here is my backdrop. <laughs> so that's kind of that's kind of what I was like on the video. It's fun. Whenever I do something like a presentation type thing, I will put a backdrop, which is nice because it uh, sort of eliminates the clutter. <laughs> that's, that's, I don't have a house without clutter. I have stuff everywhere in this house. <laughs> so that's the way that's the way it works. Also, there is a part of the Virginia Quilt Museum event that they that they started, which is just amazing. It's called the Giving Tree. And the Giving Tree is an opportunity for you to honor somebody in your life who is a quilt maker or taught you to quilt or just somebody in that loves quilts that you would like to cherish and honor them. We have a link down below here and also at my website that goes over to how you can donate to put their name on the giving tree. So they, we do some ornaments, the museum does, and they put it on the tree. And we would love to fill this tree with names. We're going to do one in honor of my mother-in-law, who was an avid quilter. I quilted before her, <laughs> but she wanted to quilt all her life. And I encouraged her to learn before she retired because she kept saying she was going to learn after she retired. And I'm like, Madge, I am learned and I still work and I'm younger than you. So you need to learn so that we can quilt together. So she did. <laughs> and we're going to do a giving tree ornament in her, um, in her name. So that is down below and I hope that, or at my website. So I hope that you will participate in that. It supports the museum, which is amazing. I mean, how many museums are totally devoted to quilts? Not many, there are not many in the country. So we have one of them here. Okay, let's talk about our block. Happy everything. We are on the hello love, <laughs> hello love. This is our, our block. We can pick, you can pick. You can pick the X or the O. X's and O's, hugs and kisses. That's what this is all about. It's some, one of my favorite images of all time. Uh, I decorated this one with some different buttons. Yeah, show you up close. There's a button, a little cluster of buttons. Uh, so I don't know which one I'm gonna do, but first let's just look at the fabric. I may do one of each and maybe the other one will be a label on the back. But let's take a look at fabric first. I put the heart, because remember I'm doing mine with yellows and grays and somewhere I'll pop in some touches of teal and that might be a little bit of a touch today. So I'm going to take it down here. Let's take a look. If you've got this over on the side so you can keep track. It's like on page 15 in your book is the pattern and then the, the layout is what you download. So I need two yellows or two grays. So let's first take a look. I pulled this really pale uh, group of yellows and I thought they would be really pretty, pretty because I think this, I definitely want to use this guy. I want to use the strawberries. This is a fig tree line from a few years ago. And then I also from Joanna's line, uh, one of them, this background, I think this is the background I'm going to use for the block because it has that little, 
<coughs> excuse me, it has a little bit of teal. And I believe that that will be, that will be the ticket. So now I could pair it, make a really pretty block. If let's say I'm doing, you know, the, the X, or if you're doing the O, either way, uh, I could pair it. So let me, you know, these, this is how they look. Let me pull you in just a little bit. Okay. So there's some that are, like this is just a little too. I don't want it to read so solid. And that was kind of fun because it also pulls in the other teal. Uh, so, you know, that would be a kind of a nice option. This would be the background, you know, that would have it. Okay, but what else do I have? I have some other options over here. So I just grabbed a handful out of, well, I did sort of pre-look. So here's my, my yellow fabrics. And there's all, here's another one that could work. There's all kinds of different ones in here that could work. So if I'm doing this strawberry and I want this other um, light with a little bit of aqua on it, then basically I would audition. Now this is a little bit stronger. It has a little bit more print uh, and <clears throat> probably a little bit more print than I want. I want something a little different than that. <clears throat> I found a stripe which is nice. I really like the stripe because stripes are always good. I found this, which is a little deeper green, a little different green, which also is nice. I don't mind them being a little bit different. It doesn't have to be exact for me. And it also has teal in it, which starts to bring in that little bit of teal. How about the bunnies? Remember the bunny? Did I show you the bunnies the other day? And they have a little teal <clears throat> in the middle of the flower. So, and of course there's strawberries and the bunnies could be with the strawberries. So that is actually kind of a cute idea. I kind of like the story that that tells. And then this is another one I found that I really like. It's just got the black uh, sort of, they're not even total plus signs, but I kind of like this combo. It's between these two for me. Which do I do? Which do I do? The bunnies could be on something else. Uh, hmm. Now, what I am also going to do is make the frame around this one. I am going to frame it, so I'm going to use the gray for the half square triangles there. And then I may or may not do these strips on the bottom and the top, so I can attach it to the heart. We'll see. So if I was gonna do the, um, let me put it down here. So if I, could, I could do them in teal but I really wanna bring the gray into the block. So here are some gray fabrics I pulled out. And I could go very tonal. Oops, let me just put them here. Okay, so I could go very much in a, you know, this reads almost solid. Uh, here is one that's a little bit lighter, which also has a little bit of speckles on it, which makes it kind of nice. I have this one with a little flower image. I like that that breaks up the solid look, but this is also directional. I don't know if I wanna deal with directional. Then I have one that's a bit lighter, which is this floral. And I kinda of like this one. I'm kinda of leaning on that one. But then, then, polka dots. Oh my, oh my. I think this is it. I think the polka dots or the words. Here's a word print, which has, say make today, so awesome, yesterday gets jealous. <laughs> There's some cute word prints. And then I found the little frogs. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. They're not for those triangles, but I'm thinking the frogs would be good for the strip, like down below, probably because it's a wider one, and put a row of frogs down there in the light gray. So that is what I'm thinking. So you could see, and put that Okay, that that is where I'm going. Although I do kind of I do kind of really like this one. Now, if I was going to switch this to gray and do a gray block, I think that these two would be fabulous for a gray block. And then maybe if I was going to do the little uh, half square triangles, do the frame, maybe do those in the bunnies or if I was gonna do the frame to bring, whoops, to bring some teal in, that one would look nice. So there would be a gray block 
with the accent around the edge of the teal and then this background of the teal. And then I don't know if I would do the frogs. If this was a gray block, I'm not sure if I would do the frogs unless it was the X. <clears throat> the X, I don't know. I don't know. So I might do both blocks and just see what it looks like. I have a big tip for when you're doing the sew and flip units for this quilt because you do not want to just take the unit like this and start trimming off the edges and then press it open. What you want to do is press it open first for a couple reasons. You want to check your accuracy. So you press it open, press both sides, and then you'll be flipping it over to check that everything comes out right. Like there's one I need to re-sew because it didn't get it quite on the line. But the other thing is you want to check for the directional print. So if you have a directional print, you don't want to you know, have flipped it or turned it the wrong way. So you want to do all four of these, lay them out, and then see how they look. Before I sew it all up, I'm doing a few checks. One is laying out the block, the outside part of the block on the design board. This is an 18 inch, yeah, 18 inch design board. And the other thing is to get the XO, and then I'll decide which will go in the project. So here they are, I've got uh, an O built over here. I haven't sewn it yet, but here are the two parts. So I went digging in my bin and I found this one. So that would be an O and this, and I've got the yellow as an X. What's interesting is that this, the O, these do blend a little bit into that background that I picked to just do, this is a test one. It's not the one I'm going to use in the quilt because I definitely want the little strawberries in the quilt, but I wanted to see what it looks like. So I like it, but I would um, think about using a different background if it were going to be, you know, something that like photographed. In person, I think you can see it well enough. So I'm going to sew both of these up and I'm going to put the yellow one into the layout so that we can have the block for this week. And the hugs and kisses is done. I went with the X part, which was the kiss part for this block. I just, I like the way that that went with the setting. And see, I put the, uh, the little froggies, see their little hearts that they have by them, so cute. And then I found this print word text for up at the top. So the part, this part is done for this section of the quilt. Now, I, okay, I want to show you what the other block looked like if I had done a hug block, which was the, you know, kind of the circle. That's pretty cool too. I think when this goes, actually, if it had gone in this layout for the quilt, I think that is, uh, I really like it. It's pretty cool. But I'm gonna save this one off. This is just a sample to show you the difference and to show you what it would look like. Uh, I'm going to keep it and probably either just put it in with all my other extra blocks that I make for, you know, testing, or maybe it'll go on the label on the, black, the back. Maybe I'll make a couple more of these and do a pillow. I could do that. I could make a hugs and kiss pillow or a table mat to go with the quilt. So this is the original one from the book. Yeah, this is cool. So much fun. See, there it goes. There we go. That'll be how they go next. This will be how they go next to each other in the quilt. Yes. Okay, your turn. Oh, plus I'm keeping these, the sew and flips from the hugs and kisses. I'm going to sew them up, trim them. I think they'll be trimmed to two inch. I think that's the biggest I can go. And then I will either make a pillow or use them for a table runner. <sighs> Gotta keep up with them. All right, my friend, you are going to make your hugs and kisses black and get it ready for your happy everything quilt. And then if you would also go over and participate in the giving tree at the Virginia Quilt Museum along with me, I think it would be so amazing. I would love to see that tree just filled with ornaments. I love you. Mwah. See you online.